All right, my next guest up is a real special treat. I'm honored to have him on the show. He's been in over 150 movie and TV shows. You know him from Halloween to The Devil's Rejects, Once Upon a Time in America, Alpha Justice, and the list goes on and on. Let's give him a late night welcome. And my friend, William Forsythe. <laughs> There you go. Now, now they woke up. Ah. And me and William met at the Chiller Expo years ago. Mm -hmm. And we became tight ever since. You looking great? I'm good, buddy. I'm You're good. looking really Still good. <laughs> You're looking really good. Now listen, you were born in bedford in Brooklyn. Flatbush bed -Stuy. I uh -huh. think that was like a guy wrote some story about me, and I, you know, I never argued about it, but it's pretty close. Now why don't you give us a little bit of your family background, people who don't know you. Well, uh, my father, you know, we're from a long line of farmers from Missouri and Tennessee. Really? Uh-huh. And my mother is a nice Italian girl from Brooklyn. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I was love at first sight. It was the Korean War. They, uh, they met, my, and my dad was actually on guard duty over at Fort Tilden, and my mom and him sort of had a date. She was down below, and my dad was up on guard duty. Really? That's how they met. It's nice, right? That's a typical love story. <laughs> Old school, right? He stayed like a fish out of water. <laughs> <laughs> now you got some resume behind you. I need to know the journey and the sacrifice of your life. What took you to get to where you are today? Mm, you know, like anything, if you want something bad, you got to put in a lot of time. I left home basically when I was about 17 and right after I graduated, the day after I graduated high school. I went into town, uh, into Manhattan, and I got my first play. It was actually uh, an operetta. You used to sing, right? That's what I, I read, that you were, you, you sang opera. I, I trained. Okay. Yeah. yeah, the biggest secret in Hollywood, but. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. you gotta be talented to do opera, it's yeah. hard. Sing what? for us. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you know, I mean, it was a long journey. I started doing plays in Manhattan, and I probably did, you know, maybe 30, 40 plays before I ever got into a film. And wow. I spent a lot of time, dedicated a lot of time to, you know, trying to you know, put together a craft to try to learn what I was doing, and uh, you know, hopefully, I learned something. <laughs> plays, plays, shows, separates the actors from the amateurs. Plays are hard. Well, you know, it, it was. I love it. I, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. I remember once uh, our aspiration of making it in show business was to be able to afford any sandwich I wanted at the Carnegie <laughs> Deli. So, no, that's <laughs> that's a hundred percent true. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank God Starbucks wasn't around. That was my food budget for the whole week. <laughs> One coffee. Yeah, no, tell me yeah. about it. So. Unbelievable. Now listen, the first time I uh, became aware of your act and became a fan was back in the days. Sure, everybody my age was out for Justice Steven Seagal. Uh-oh. And you uh -oh. played Richie. Uh-oh. That Dirt. was a classic, classic Dirty film. Richie. I mean, the good, the good part about that was I got the film in Brooklyn, where I'm from. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I ever got the film in Brooklyn. And it was funny, because Steven Seagal came up to me and he said to me, you know, you really need to work on your Brooklyn accent. Which I found kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> I said, you see that pizza place? I used to take my girlfriend there when I was like 12. Which one was that, Sabonis? Uh, uh, Elevate? Uh, no, pfft, Umerta. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Now also, The Untouchables, after that, I fell in love with that movie, because I was a big, big No, mob. I did the series, John, come on, for God's sakes. Okay, TV series. How many movies did they do, 160, 170? <laughs> How many? <you> <laughs> Hey, listen, I pump you up. <laughs> That's what I said in his IMDb. Yeah. You, you better go double check it. Now, how many uh, years did that go? What was it, 93 no, to 94? I did two years on the series. I played Al Capone mm -hmm. and had one of the best times of my life. I actually, I had an incredible in to researching Al, getting into his life, actually his family, people who lived with him. And uh, I got to know who he was and I had a, a fantastic time playing him. I mean. You know, imagine suffering. I'm living in Chicago for two years playing Al Capone. I yeah. couldn't buy a drink. Really? Was, oh, no. It's good. <laughs> and you worked with a lot of the top yeah. actors from uh, Al Pacino, Steve Buscemi, Sean Connery, uh, Armando Sante. Who yeah. was like, and many more. Who were your favorite guys to work with? You know, I don't, you know, John, there's so many really great guys that I've had a, an opportunity to work with. Um, I'll, through different periods of my life, there have been people who are my favorite actors, and I've gotten to work with m most of them. I mean, Robert Duvall, you left off that mm -hmm. list, and Robert De Niro, and these were... Once Upon a Time in America, right? 
And, well, what, that's where I met Robert De Niro, who was uh, actually very responsible for me getting the part. I, Sergio Leone had wanted me to be in the movie, and I had to go before. It was the most nervous day of my life. I had to go in front of uh, Mr. De Niro and get my approval. Uh -huh. and I, I was pretty nervous, and he just looked at me and goes, okay, I approve. You know, and but now it, it meant everything feeling. to me. It opened up the door for a chance for a real career, and you know, and, and forever. I, I appreciate it. Now, who did you learn the most from out of all these actors? Or you took a little bit of everybody? Oh, no, I mean, it's just, I mean, how can you even think about that question? Uh, you know, Robert was very important to me, De Niro. I'll, I'll put it to you this way. When I was in Brooklyn, anybody remember the Georgetown theaters over on Ralph Avenue? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I went in there to see a little movie called Mean Streets. Uh. I had no idea who Robert De Niro or Martin Scorsese or anyone was. I was so blown away by what I saw that I went back into the theater, I got a job as an usher, and I worked as an usher in the Georgetown Theater until the movie closed, and I went and quit. Wow. Yeah. And then, you know, a few years later, I got a chance to work with Robert, and, you know, yeah. it really meant something to me. Now, let's talk about some of the other movies. Like, one of my favorites, I'm sure you heard this, in great cast, the Gotti movie. That's a great movie. You know. Excellent flick. It's somehow f more forgotten than I imagined. I think it's the, uh, one of the best uh, gangster movies ever made. Definitely. And um, HBO made it. I think it's one of the best things HBO ever put out. And, you know, Armin Asante was absolutely brilliant as John. And then I got to work with the great Anthony Quinn, yeah. who I became friends with. And it, it was an incredible experience, a really incredible experience. All the guys that were involved in that. We lived like we were the Gambino family, mm -hmm. which was interesting because yeah. we shot it in Toronto. <laughs> it doesn't get old. You, all the actors that were in there were great. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's like, it was, it was, it was real. It was a fabulous movie. And, you know, somebody said to me once, if you're lucky, one out of ten things you do will be a great experience. I think that's really about the average, and that movie is definitely one of the great experiences. Yeah, but you were, you were, you, were, you and uh, Manga Sante were strong, man. Yeah. And the part when you guys were in the, uh, the garbage the dump, the garbage <laughs> dump <laughs> and you're like, this is gonna be big. Coach Genosha, yo, John, yeah. you can't do that. Yeah. Coach Genosha, whacking the boss. Yeah, <laughs> it was a fabulous experience. I mean, you know, I'm fortunate to have had many, but, I, I really, really enjoyed working with Armand. I think he's he's one he was one of the great, great actors and uh, you know, I love him. I, I, I wish you know, I saw him every day. Mm -hmm. you know, he's an amazing guy. Yeah, I, I, I guess it could be like bittersweet whenever when the movie wraps and then the ones you're close with it you miss them, you don't see them for a little while. Yeah, it's like a bus taking off that way and your bus goes that way and, and you're lucky if you ever see him again. Like we were at Chiller, you said, oh, Frank Vincent's over there. I haven't seen Frank since f how many years? Yeah. You remember? Yeah, since I killed him at DB. <laughs> <laughs> now let's, let's get a little more current and then go back and forth. De and a lot of people didn't see this movie. It's a great movie, Dear Mr. Gacy. Yeah. And you played John Wayne Gacy. Yeah, it's the creepiest experience of my life. You yeah. played that good, I mean, it, it, different dynamic, but uh, very believable, the movie. Well, to be honest, when I, um, I went to Chicago to research Gacy, and the first thing I found that really bothered me, all the doors that normally should have been open because it was recent history were all shut. And I realized that there was so much more to the story than anyone knew. Mm -hmm. So I dug in and I stayed there a much longer time and I basically hardy boyed the hell out of it and I, I played detective. And honestly, by the time it was over with, I, I discovered things that the police didn't even know. Mm -hmm. And I started to mix stories and, you know, I mean, I honestly, you know, at one point I, I, I feel absolutely convinced I, I, I found a place where there could have been a body. But, you know, <laughs> that's how crazy it was. The it movie, was very scary. The movie turned out really great. I watched it once, I'll never watch it again. <laughs> You know, it's it, but it's good. Yeah. You know, it was gr a really good movie. Uh, the TV series Mob Doctor, which a lot of people <laughs> were big fans of that, and we were disappointed when they canceled it. I mean, you were brilliant in that. It was a, it was a good series. Fox puts out a lot of good series. Yeah. I'm surprised that didn't go on for a second season. Well, they had it up against uh, you know some really crappy shows like NFL Football, Dancing <laughs> with the Stars, and The Voice. <laughs> yeah. You know, it 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 just they wouldn't move the time slot. I think people really liked the show. I think it was the most DVR show. Yeah, yeah. And all that, but you know, it got the hook. Twelve episodes, and you know. But what was funny about that is when I played Al Capone, the last thing I did as Al Capone in Chicago is they took me up these steps to put me in jail. And the first shot we did in Mob Doctor was I came down the very same steps oh, really? 20 years later, like wow. I'm getting out of jail. So 
you know. But then, you know, they gave us the hook, and that, that, that was it. You did a lot of TV appearances, a lot of my top favorite shows, and then you go back from back in the day for the old ones, like, say, uh, what do we have here? Uh, <laughs> you know, like Hill Street Blues, Fame, yeah. T.J. Hooker, uh, <laughs> Chips. You want to talk a little bit about that? Anything what? you want to talk about, John. You know. <laughs> You're easy, William. <laughs> what? Now, what can I say? Which one? T.J. Hooker? T.J. Hooker, that <laughs> <I> was that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. It was funny, uh, I worked with uh, William Shatner, and he, uh, I mean, literally, I'm sitting right there getting made up, and he's not even talking to me. He's rehearsing our scene with someone else, you know, and, and then we got out there, and he, he kept, like, ordering me around and being real weird, and I remember at one point, I looked at him, and I went, Yabo, <laughs> Captain Kirk. <laughs> You should have seen the neck muscles on that son of a... <laughs> it was pretty funny. He must have went crazy. What about Hill Street Blues yeah. was a weird one. It was actually... That episode was based on someone who I knew, a girl who was in my acting class, um, you know, uh, Dominique Dunn, mm -hmm. and Griffith Dunn's sister. And, uh, and it was based on that. It was loosely based on her, and so I knew her, and she had been murdered. Oh, and, wow, I'm sorry. Uh, so that was a very strange one to do. I, I went on, and I did that show, and... It always felt creepy, and it was, of course, one of my first, you know, whatever, first five, six jobs, so. When, what year did you actually start getting, like, these TV roles? I started in movies in 1980, um, you know, a after being in, in the theater for, whatever, seven, eight years. The first movie I ever did was with Dennis Hopper. Okay. And, and it was really interesting because I, I had arrived in L.A. 20 years from the day James Dean died. Oh, wow. So I had this very strange connection to James Dean. I didn't know that, but it, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. The very first movie, my very first close-up with Dennis Hopper, and back then he was pretty wild when he was on, on the set, and they had done his coverage first, and he drank, I, I would estimate, probably six, seven ounces of liquor per take. Mm -hmm. So by the time they got all his coverage, which was brilliant, they turned to me. And what was f weird about it was we were filming up near the Griffith Observatory, you know, where Rebel Without a Cause was filmed. Uh -huh. And our movie was about guys who raced on Mulholland Drive, which was very much like, you know, the Rebel Without a Cause. So when it got to my close-up, you know, God rest his soul, I love him with all my heart for what he taught me. Dennis looked at me, and he just started to cry. He had tears coming out of his eyes, and he just went, the Diener, man, the Diener. And his tears were rolling out of his eyes. He said they paid him $50,000, man, and they broke his effing heart. Wow. And that was the first time any, you know, and I'm standing there, and my line was, no, man, I don't want to race you tonight. You know, and it, so it was an incredible lesson in film that I got from Dennis. And, and oddly enough, he was, he was talking to James Dean while talking to me. So, you know, it was, it was a pretty incredible moment. Yeah, man, that's a cool story. Yeah. Now, what about... Uh, Entourage, that's one of my favorites with a lot of the people when you, you made a couple appearances on it. How was it working with those guys? Was it fun or was it, it a joke? It was all right. It was all right. It was one of those jobs where my <laughs> agents go, you got to do the show. Everybody's doing it. You Everybody's know, and I, watching, you know, yeah. they didn't really develop it into much, but I had fun doing it. Yeah. You know? I, everybody was great. And, you know, and I got to work with Jeremy Piven and I was, I was friends with his dad, Byrne. Oh, really? Piven. He yeah. was an actor, the dad? His dad was on The Untouchables. He oh. played Johnny Torrio. Oh, I got to look into that. And I, wow. I loved Byrne. He was one of the most amazing guys and teachers ever. And I, I loved him with all my heart. So. Wow. I got to work with uh, Pacino Sorry. twice. I did uh, Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy, I Madonna worked, too, right? I worked, yeah. <laughs> got to work with Al on that one. And then uh, years later, we made 88 Minutes together. I, I love working with Al. You know, of those guys, that generation of actors were the ones who inspired me right before my time came. This was when they asked you next. Uh, and they were the best. And Al, uh, you know, of all the guys, Al is the most down to earth, most beautiful soul, like passionate guy. I remember we were, we were rehearsing in an Italian restaurant in Vancouver. And, you know, and Al, you know, we were full on rehearsing. And this was a fancy restaurant. They're serving, they're laying down the plates and everything. And Al looks over and he goes, you, <laughs> you know, and I look, no, you, you know, and we're screaming, and these guys are just, you know, <laughs> pouring, and you know, it was pretty wild. You know, he's such a committed actor, such a good guy. I, lo I love Al, you know, he, one of my favorite people I've ever worked with. You know. nice. Cool stuff, man.
I was going to ask you who were your mentors growing up besides Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. Who else? Well, you know, you go through stages. You know, oddly enough, when I was a little boy, my favorite actor was uh, two. I had I had two or three, but my favorite of all was Gary Cooper and James Cagney. I was going to say Cagney had to be. Yeah. Those, Love Cagney. Those guys. I was just sitting watching a Gary Cooper movie today and. And just wishing, you know, wishing movies were made like that. You know? Those guys were just like naturals, you, you know. know? They they were damn good, and they and there was something about, you know, I mean, all, obviously two completely different guys. I know Cagney, I could relate to more from where I I came from, but you know, I, they just don't make movies like that, and and there's just no one like those guys anymore. And I told my friends, I, I watch these movies with my friends, and you know they can't wait to switch to some pop culture crap to watch, you know. And I'm just like, you know, you got it all wrong. No, buddy. I can't get enough of James Cagney. You know, I love all that stuff. I start to think the world is black and white. I, I watch so many of the movies. Now let me ask you this: you, you wrapped up that movie last year, uh, the Raging Bull sequel. It's called the Bronx Bull. The Bronx Bull. Yeah. Now, what is that? Is it going to be a release date with that? Uh, because I heard it came out really well. It can't. The movie. In my opinion, honestly, I mean, everybody wanted to hate us. Everybody wanted it to be bad. You I mean, you should have seen the things online. Mm -hmm. How dare they? You know, and they do that with everything. They but I don't with. care. You know, I was really happy, you know, to do it. In fact, I asked Jake. I said, "Why would you ever want another movie made about you?" Mm -hmm. You know, because Jake wrote a second book, and Jake looked at me without hesitation. He said, he, "Because there's more to my story. There's more to me." He told me, he said, I want people to know that I'm a fighter and that I never gave up. And our movie really is more about Jake after, I mean, I had fight sequences that are actually Jake's nightmares mm -hmm. in the movie. But it was just that, you know, it, it was the part of a life, you know, it's one thing to be champ and to be in the limelight. This was the, the years, I played him at, from age 33 to 73. Oh, wow. And, and Jake went through a lot in those years he I mean all the things he went through and the money was gone and it was to me it was the most in interesting thing about his life was to portray that portion of his life you know because he found himself in very odd situations working in very strange and odd jobs during those years mm -hmm. and I, I I loved playing him I'm disappointed last year the movie was scheduled to be released I, to be honest with you, I don't really know the whole story, but I think the producers started getting into some stupid, egotistical fight, and believe me, there's a lot of that bullshit yeah, that goes all on, over the place. You know, in in Hollywood, and they actually blew the release, which was a real release, wow, a the theatrical release. And so now I'm waiting to see what's going to happen, and I hope it gets released. You know, it was a tremendous cast, and and I and I think the movie really delivered. And that's that's the part that makes me crazy because I went from Boardwalk Empire where yeah. I'm playing the big butcher, and they and <laughs> these bastards gave me 67 days to boxing train, so I had to get in the ring, and I couldn't even, you know I had to basically do it eight nine hours a day, I had to train like that in order to be able to get in the ring legitimately and be able to fight and 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 we did it. Well, good luck with it. I can't wait to see it when it comes out. Now we're here tonight. Laugh, Killer Laugh, there's a new movie that's coming out that you star in. Right, so yep. why don't we give it up for uh, actor, writer, Vic Coluccio. <laughs> What's up, Victor? How you doing? Man? How you doing, buddy? Hi. Vic was on the show a couple years ago. You're looking good. You look the same like you did when you left here. A lot of makeup, thanks to your uh, makeup <laughs> artist there. Now, Laugh, Killer, Laugh, for people who don't know, is directed by Kamal Ahmad. But people who don't know who he is, he's uh, one of the original Jerky Boys. And once he retired a couple years later, he wanted to make some films. And we got the boys here tonight to talk about it. Frank Stone. Yeah. And who do you play in the film? I play uh, a mob boss named Frank Stone. Uh -huh. Now, why don't you guys describe your characters and uh, where the movie's going? <laughs> well, we hope not in the <laughs> toilet. We hope it goes somewhere really nice. We like, uh, look, it's an interesting picture, you know, if you ask me. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a story about a guy who is, I mean, he's a savant, but he happens to be a killer and a gangster. And he's a loner. He sticks to himself. He's just a social outcast. And, uh, and somewhere in the course of the film, he, he sees this girl and he, decides that he is going 
you know, he, he opens himself up, he follows her, and he begins to open himself up. And in doing so, he begins to take up writing. And of course, since you're supposed to write what you know, he begins to write uh, about working for this gentleman oh, here. Oh, really? And it becomes a sensitive yeah. subject tonight. <laughs> well, you mentioned a lot of Williams' films and uh, his portrayal of different characters. And in Laugh, Kill, a Laugh, um, in my opinion, you had the opportunity to use everything you've ever learned. And it's like, um, like a, a musician, you know, uh, act as a musician, one of the few fields that the older you get, the more you do it, the better you get. Unlike boxes like you played, you, <laughs> you get all the football players, you're never as good as you used to be, but as an actor, musician, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And, and William, like I said, he has a wide range of uh, emotions and and y you have to see it to believe it. I don't want to give it away. Yeah, when you see him in the films and when you're sitting, into, sitting next to him like this, it's two different guys. You know? yeah. but, but you're very deep in your acting. Oh, thank you, buddy. But I got to tell you, you know, like working on the film with Victor, you know, even from the start, I had a, I had a really good feeling about this movie. Now, you know, th a, a film like this, you know, it's not, not, not necessarily the biggest budget or things like that. You're up against the ropes a lot of the times. But there was something about this movie that was special, mm -hmm. and and you know, and I I was sitting back there praying to the uh, theatrical gods that it would turn out <laughs> good. So and I and you know, but I think you know it is good. I know it is. Well, the whole audition process. How did Kamal actually pick you guys for the film? Because I heard there wasn't too many auditions. Did he handpick you? Um, he saw a, a reel of mine on Facebook, and decided that uh, I'd be uh, an interesting mafia boss because a lot of I don't look like one and that I would have to play a, the guy as uh, cunning and conniving and very smart and slick uh -huh. and you know so he thought it was a different way to go uh, a lot of my Italian friends uh, say hey why didn't I get that part you know yeah, of course <laughs> 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 what about you William uh, uh, the first time I got approached by Kamal was for another movie he had asked me to do a film and uh, I can't remember the reason, but I, I didn't do it. And so I, he, had, he had expressed a desire to work with me. He had a couple different scripts that he had sent me, and I went, I, this one, this one, mm -hmm. I like this one. There's something about this guy. I mean, I told him, I said, how do you take a guy who in the beginning of the movie is a stone cold killer, and by the end of the movie you make the audience love him? And to me, that's one of the most challenging things in film is, yeah. to, is to take a character like that and, and have an audience rooting for you, even though you're, you know, I mean, in, I think by the time the film opens, I've already knocked off seven people <laughs> in the opening, and yet he becomes a guy that the audience roots for. And there's just something about that that is wonderful. Well, we got the trailer, and it's very strong. Would you guys like to see it? Yeah. All right, control room. Laugh, kill a laugh. Hi, I'm Jackie. You heard me, you dirty double. What's yours again? Frank, how come you never smile? May I help you? I would like to take your creative writing class. I just want to know what goes on in that head of yours. It's Tony Forte, local punk gangster with a long arm, though. I'm always gave for work, work whenever the need would arise. Hey, Frank, have a seat. I was just wondering if you're gonna write any more stories about me and my operation. Kill that rat bastard. How you feeling, Frank? Been in a coma for a few weeks. Hey, listen, I've had a hell of a day. I just broke out of a hospital. <laughs> These guys tried to kill me. <laughs> they did! They took guns! They were shooting at me! They shot up the place! They shut up my pillow! You think you're crazy, huh, Frank? <laughs> Where is Frank Stone? Hey, Frank, the boss wants to see you tomorrow. I want you to get me the best exterminator that money can buy. That's what I want. 
here right now, I'm gonna kill you. Okay? <laughs> that was nice. Was it's nice to see Tom Sizemore with you guys, too. How was it working with him? I love and Tom. you know him for years. I love Tom. He's he's a big-hearted, uh, you know, he's a wonderful actor. He looked good. He looks good up there. Yeah. So hopefully this movie's gonna do good. Get everybody well, on board. We had a, a public screening of it uh, in Manhattan not an invited audience, just a public screening. And when uh, William did his stand-up routine, he actually got a standing ovation. Uh -huh. Yeah, they, they love it. It's worth, it's worth seeing it. Well, it's funny, nobody knew I was gonna do it. I, I, you know, I, well, originally what the scene was is I was just sitting there watching the comedy act laughing. Mm -hmm. Because that would have, at a certain point in the movie, the guy gets hit in the head and suddenly he finds everything funny. And I just said to Kamal, I said, well, let me go up. So I just jumped up on, on the uh, stage and I just started to improvise and the audience was there, they started to laugh and, and, uh, and it happened. So. That's it, man. That's, you know. that's how it works. And why don't you just mention a couple more of the actors that are in there before we wrap this up. Not Larry Romano. Oh, Larry Romano, I think he's playing golf in California with Mark Wahlberg right now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tom Sizemore. Victor Calicio, That's it, man. <laughs> William Forsythe. Well, Bianca, Bianca Hunter. Uh -huh. yeah, she's is, good. It's just a, she's a wonderful actress. I mean, I think the first time anybody saw her was with Harvey Keitel. Mm -hmm. it was that famous scene where Harvey brings the girl over to the car and he's, uh, you know, hmm. doing his number. And, um, <laughs> that was my favorite scene. It's a great scene. <laughs> when I met, uh, the, the one time I, I had met Abel Farrar, he goes, oh, come here, come over to my hotel. I want to show you something. And that's the scene he showed me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Unbelievable. Well, best of the luck for you guys. Uh, oh, laugh, kill, a laugh. Comes to theaters. April 24, 2015, selected theater. This is going to be on video on demand, so definitely check it out. William Forsythe, it was my pleasure uh, having you on the show. Lord. Thank you so much. <laughs> William Forsythe, Vic Carluccio. <laughs> how it's supposed to go p all right we, thank you everybody for coming tonight uh it's been a long night and we'd like to say special thanks to all our friends who donated all the fine dining you guys here we had uh paulie and george from nucci's restaurant we have fratelli's pizzeria and cigar and bagels thank you guys uh, the food is always great if you want to be a member of our studio audience just email late night with johnny p at yahoo.com get us on facebook twitter instagram all the above youtube vimeo.com i'm johnny p get home safe and have a good night thank you yeah.